Marcus Willis, man, it's been a minute since we caught up to you. Um, tell me, what's going on? How's, how's everything been with you, man? Uh, man, things have been all right. Um, still fighting. Uh, uh, just lost a, a fight that should have went my way um, yeah. back in August on the uh, Sean Porter and Danny Garcia car. But you know how boxing goes, man. Politics right. play a big role in it, you know. Uh, no matter how hard you fight and, you know, um, when, when you do the best, and you prove that you win, they take it from you, you know, you really can't do anything about it. Gotcha. I was going to ask you about your career. You could look up and down your record, you see split decision, majority decision. A lot of times that means you, maybe you got robbed or maybe, tell me how hard have some of these decisions been, you know, that haven't gone your way? Um, it definitely takes a toll on you, man. It's depressing sometimes because, you know, you're putting your blood, sweat, and tears into training and uh, you're not getting your just due. Um, there's plenty of fights that uh, I felt that I won and I didn't get, you know, the proper decision. Yeah. Um, uh, early on in my career, in, in the amateurs definitely, and, uh, you know, even in the pros. So, yeah, it, it, sometimes it kind of, you know, um, makes you not want to fight anymore or, you know, you just want to get out of the game. But that love for, for the fight game, it keeps me in. Gotcha. Now let's throw it back to how you got into this sport. You know, growing up, where are you from and raised and your childhood and upbringing and how boxing came into your life? Uh, born and raised in Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, my dad started boxing when he was in uh, middle school or high school. Um, it became a family business. My older brother boxed. My brother, my, both of my older brothers boxed. Yeah. Um, so I, I was in the gym in diapers, you know, so I've yeah. been around the gym, you know, uh, from a very young age and started fighting at eight years old. Like Got 25 amateur fights. How, how much? 125. What was the amateur scene like? What do you remember most about those years of amateur? Man, a lot of traveling, uh, a lot, lot of uh, tournaments. Um, it was fun. I, I missed the amateur days, man. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. You probably see uh, a, a worse side of the sports as being pro, like the business, the politics, and everything, yeah, huh? I, I mean, you get the politics in, in the amateurs too. Yeah. Uh, I've, you know, I've had you know some some bad decisions. Um, not gonna name the fighters, you know, who yeah. I've had them with, but uh, I've had some bad decisions uh, that I think uh, probably altered my pro career as yeah. well. Um, but uh, the with, with with the pros, money gets involved a little bit more, you know. Right, right. Um, so so there's a lot more uh, strings being pulled um, behind the scenes. Got you. Now, um, your your pro. Uh, when did you turn professional? Like what what year was it and what? I turned pro uh, in 2009 okay yeah, 2009 what was it like what do you remember most about those days uh, my, my pro my, my pro days my pro debut um, it was it was easy like I mean I have been doing this for years so it wasn't anything you know like right. a, it wasn't a, a, a hard transition or a different transition or anything because it's what I live breathe and, uh, breathe and eat um, so it wasn't anything different but uh, the, the excitement of being up under the lights and being in front of camera. My third pro fight was on ESPN. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, there was an excitement with the crowd and, and the entertainment aspect of it. Gotcha. Now, what have been maybe some of your best memories, like your best, you know, as a pro, like the good side of it? Um, the, the traveling, man. Um, getting to, to Vegas was my probably my best memory as a pro. My first fight in Vegas, fighting on a uh, uh, Don King on the card. Yeah. Um, or, or Don King card. I beat uh, James De La Rosa um, on a Showtime on the card. That was, so a that good was probably win, yeah. one, of, one of my biggest wins. And just just to be in Vegas, you know, the mecca of boxing. When you make it to Vegas, you know, yeah. um, that's that's a big stepping ground, stepping stone. Got you. Now you're here now. The team Team Willis. Uh, team 
Willis Boxing. Yeah, tell me about this gym, how long it's been going and everything. Well, we've been Team Willis Boxing uh, since 2011. We've been in this location uh, on Cleveland uh, for three, coming up on three years now. Okay. And, uh, we have kids from seven on up to adults, you know, that are just you know, trying to get in shape. Um, we have kids that are competing. Uh, we have a couple of pro fighters that are in here. Um, meet my brother, uh, this kid, um, Brian Kennedy. Yeah. Um, and we just, we're a family environment, brotherhood, like everybody comes in here to train hard and, you know, achieve goals and, you know, just kill it. What's it like though, you're not only a fighter, you gotta be now with this gym almost a mentor in a sense, like what's yeah. that side of it like? Yeah, I'm definitely a mentor, you know, I, like the kids, they come to me and ask me questions, ask me, you know, uh, different techniques and, you know, uh, how to throw this and, and what to do in this situation, so I'm definitely giving back um, as a mentor as well as they, they see they see me and my brother in the ring sparring they, so they they pick up on us you know gotcha um you still obviously got a lot of fight left in you i mean what, what weight class are you first off i'm fighting at junior middle okay 154 okay mm -hmm. yep 154 what uh what would you like now what, what what do you think the future could hold um there's definitely uh other opportunities i, I want to get you know i would love a rematch with my last opponent but i don't yeah. think he wants it uh <laughs> Um, I've, I've actually spoke, you know, to his people and spoke to him about it. And I, I don't think that's going to happen, but um, definitely getting the proper fights, um, getting on the big stage again, getting on some TV, some uh, some good fights, um, uh, getting some title fights, you know, some possible possible title fights. And uh, but right now, like I'm focused on uh, staying healthy. Um, I, I have a business that I just opened up. It's called Assassin Fight Gear. It's my own equipment well, tell company. Tell me about that. Tell us, tell so, us about that. Yeah. Um, my, my company is uh, Assassin Fight Gear. It's equipment for fighters by fighters. So I'm doing MMA equipment, um, boxing equipment, jiu-jitsu. Uh, you can go to assassinfightgear.com. Yeah. I got hand wraps, uh, MMA gloves, MMA trunks, shirts, and everything. So I'm, and I'm giving uh, 10 to 15% back to cancer uh Cancer patients and families that have been affected by cancer. Good so, stuff. That, and that's going to be year round. I'm not doing that just for you know breast yeah. cancer awareness month. That's going to be year round. Got to. And what? How long have you wanted to do that? And what? How hard was it to kind of get that up and running? It. I've been. I've had the thoughts, uh, or it came to my mind maybe three or four years ago, um, and I just started it. Uh, I did my LLC in May, and. Uh, it's, it's been it's been a pretty interesting road. It hasn't been like really tough or anything, and it's not really that hard to do because um, I've been focused on doing it. Uh, and I, I made some connections. I was over in Japan um, with uh, Murata uh, last yeah. year in his training camp, and I made some connections over there that kind of put me in position to um, to to make these steps to create my own business. What was that like being in camp with him? Man, it it was a great experience. Um, Murata's a great guy. Uh, they're they're very um, gracious and uh, respectful. Um, just just the Japanese culture in general, um, and just their their architecture is amazing. Uh, their uh, how how they respect life in a whole is like beyond what we have here. You right, know? right. Like you, I walk on the streets over there, and there's millions of people walking around all day, and you see no debris, no trash, nothing on the grounds, yeah. and it's like it's amazing to see that. But um, they just have so much respect for life. And I didn't want to come back. <laughs> Got you. It, was, it was amazing. Got you. Now, is it hard, like, uh, running a gym, though? Like, it's kind of like, a, is it an extra responsibility being in here and everything? Yeah. Um, I mean, but I, I love I love doing it. Uh, it, do, it does. Um, I, I could say that it takes away from my career as a fighter. Um, but I do love giving back, so it's just you have to have to find that time to manage, you know, both of them. And last thing, uh, Brian Kennedy, I've been noticing him online. What is he? Pretty good prospect coming up. Yeah, that kid, he's sharp, man. He's yeah. sharp. He, he's focused. Uh, the one the thing about him is he's super focused and he wants to achieve greatness. Um, so he has that killer instinct and that drive, that uh, that champion side. Okay. So he definitely ha has the, the the vernacular and the DNA to do it. And tell me, um, how can people follow you and keep up with you? Uh, Y'all can follow me on first off Assassin Fight Gear right, on right. IG, uh, Facebook, um, Magic MW on Instagram, um, Twitter, uh, Magic MW on uh, Snapchat and Marcus Willis on Facebook and everything else. And I did, I also got to ask your brother Quentin, I remember I met yeah. you, him, how's he doing these days? Quentin's doing good, man. He's raising a family. Um, 
has a beautiful family uh, and he's running a business, you know. Quentin, Quentin works hard every day, but he's still in here when he gets a chance.